Angel is the world's first global e-hospital and it has a panel of over 300 doctors from more than 22 countries. On the official website, the Vista has an option of an e-query. They can consult a doctor or order blood tests from their home. They also have an option of registering themselves and getting access to additional features. In an exclusive interview with VC Circle, Dr. Devraj Shom, co-founder Medi Angel, talks in detail about his company, the concept behind it and what makes it tick. Let me first start from why we develop Medi Angels. And uh, Medi Angels actually developed from a personal tragedy. Uh, well, it's not so much a tragedy anymore, but it was something that was viewed as a huge tragedy. My father is a 65-year-old at the present moment. In 2009, he was 62. And at that point in time, 2008 9 he suddenly started having dry cough and we were lucky he went for a CT scan because we ended up uh, discovering that he basically had lung cancer and the cancer had already spread to four organs. So essentially, long story cut short, he had about six months to live. Now, uh, because I was able to gain access to Dr. Catherine Pisters at MD Anderson Cancer Center, she was able to tell me that we needed to try a drug which was at that point in time not being used in India for lung cancer treatment. We tried that drug and in six months dad was cancer free, right? Today it has been three years, he's had three recurrences, but each time we've been able to find a new drug which has beaten his cancer back. What triggered many angels was the fact that the reason I had access to all these super specialists and all these superstars who were treating my dad was because I had the networks to do so. You could be the richest person in the world and not have access to these networks. How would you, even as the richest man in the world, gain access to these privileged networks? That's how many angels came into being. That's how we decided to set up a consulting platform which could allow you, the end consumer, the ability to go and seek an opinion for your particular disease from the doctor who was the best in that particular disease wherever in the world he might be. What was the concept behind many angels? Mary Angels is the world's first global e-hospital. Here we have 300 of the world's best doctors in 85 super specialities and from over 22 countries, making Mary Angels the most super specialized healthcare panel ever developed in the world and available to the common man. So the concept of Mary Angels is to basically shift offline healthcare into the online mode. It's for generations today which have very little access to healthcare at an affordable rate. It's also about the future where generations Y and Z will turn around and say, why do I need to travel four hours in order to be seeing a doctor who gives me only 15 minutes of his time? Why can't the quality doctor or the topmost doctor in the world, wherever he might be, visit me and at, in the vicinity of my home? It sounds really funny to me that in today's world, we have so much access to a lot of stuff that we can get the best pizza, the same pizza which I bought in the US, I can literally buy in India. I can buy the best camera which is located in the US and I can buy it from India. But unfortunately, I still do not have enough information which is available in my hands and which allows me to choose the most experienced, most affordable and most accessible doctor or the most, even the most reputed one for my particular disease. What I get is usually a one-size-fits-all. Why should it be a one-size-fits-all? So from that perspective, Medi Angels aims to make credible, neutral medicine available and affordable in the hands of the end consumer. That is why an e-hospital was set up. Can you tell me how does an e-hospital work? That's a great question. Let me go ahead and demonstrate this to you on a whiteboard. How an e-hospital differs from a normal hospital is that in an e-hospital, the consumer becomes the center of the world. So essentially you have the consumer. Here, the consumer is sitting in, at his home. Okay, He's able to basically access all these wonderful doctors at a click. So there are doctors in different portions of the world. Let's say that you had a US, you had a UK, you had Australia, right? And these are really super specialized doctors. So if, if someone has a child with a cardiology problem, then you are looking for a pediatric cardiologist. And a pediatric cardiologist in most countries or even a city like Mumbai is a very rare entity. You don't have a pediatric cardiologist or at least someone who's trained in pediatric cardiology available. So here what the consumer does is he uploads his reports, goes ahead and provides all details like his history, uploads his ECG if you will, his CT scan, his images, his photographs etc. Shoots a consult which ends up going to a doctor out here. Once it goes to a doctor out here, basically a doctor ends up receiving an SMS and an email. The doctor goes through the entire details. If he is not comfortable with something, then he goes ahead and writes back to the admin doctor. So there's one panel called the admin doctor. 
the admin doctor actually goes ahead and understands the entire situation. If he wants more details, he goes back and liaises again with the consumer and gets it back to the uh, uh, elite panelist. The elite panelist now goes ahead, confirms the diagnosis, goes ahead and tells you what is to be done. So he shoots the report back or the e-consult back to the consumer with the recommendation that he gets certain tests done. Once the tests have been ordered, there's a link which ends up coming in the consumer's mail itself. Which, with which he can go ahead and order these tests at a click as well. So he orders these tests, he goes ahead and clicks and he orders on these particular tests. These, uh, 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 the application syncs up on the back end, tracks which labs are uh, uh, available in this particular area. Someone comes in into his home, does a blood collection the next day, uploads these reports, so the uh, lab reports now are uploaded onto the cloud, basically onto the application. The consumer sees this at the same time. Interestingly enough, when the consumer in India or wherever he might be seeing it, at the same time, in real time, the doctor in Australia is also able to have a look. So it's almost real time medicine. Once he's gone ahead and seen the reports, he says, all right, your blood tests are normal. Everything is uh, uh, routine. Just go ahead and do X, Y, Z things. You don't need to do anything else and you're fine. This investigation or diagnostic reports which he ended up getting as well as this electronic uh, uh, consult together become part of his e-records. So the e-hospital basically places the consumer at this, it's consumer centric. So if you wanted a doctor who's super specialized for your particular disease living anywhere in the world amongst the most elite in the world, you're able to access that at a click and you're able to treat that in various ways. What do you feel is the potential of an e-hospital? The potential of an e-hospital or an idea like Medi Angels is huge. As far as I'm concerned, the entire world is a market for Medi Angels. Let me explain to you how. So if you look at consumers, consumers, I will divide them into two basic types. One of the consumers could be the internet savvy types, living in the city, transact via the credit cards, people like us, basically professionals, educated folks. These are the people who, though they have access to healthcare and are living in the cities, the problem is they don't know which opinion to trust. And for their survival, a second opinion from credible, neutral sources becomes very, very important. So that's one bag of consumer. The second band of consumer, because healthcare, especially in a country like India, has a very rapid tail off. So as a result of which we might be sitting in Mumbai and at that point in time, healthcare is rosy and we have access to top quality healthcare or so we think at least. But if you move 30 kilometers north of Mumbai, you went to a Dahan or some small town like that, you wouldn't have any healthcare. Forget super specialists, not even specialists are available. And you will never have a situation or you will never get past a situation where 90% of the doctors or at least the super specialists are located in 10% of the geographical area in the world. So there's a lot of inequitability of healthcare distribution in between cities, from city to city, and then in between countries as well. So certain areas will have a lot of doctors, but not everyone resides in that geographical area. So are you then going to make your patient travel two days in order to get a concert which lasts for 15 minutes? That's where Medi Angels comes in. So in my opinion, whether you are internet savvy and very educated, or you're uneducated, or you're uh, uh, living in a smaller town, everyone needs Medi Angels because everyone needs a proper opinion, everyone needs proper healthcare. And so from that perspective, the potential of an e-hospital is huge, whether you're living in the US, you're living in Africa, you're living in the Middle East, or in parts of India as well. How much revenue has been generated by Medi Angels? So Medi Angels, uh, we have the luck of approaching almost when every venture capitalist when we want to take uh, the idea off. At that point in time, no one wanted to fund us. But we were very lucky that a reputed house like the HDFC Private Equity came forward with big pockets and funded us. So we got Series A funding in February this year and we raised 3 crores. At that point in time, since then, the valuations that people are offering have mind-bogglingly gone up, gone up by about 5x because everyone's starting to realize what a Medi Angels can do. In terms of revenue streams, there are multiple revenue streams. So we basically have a pull and a push strategy for consumers. The push strategy being driven by sales while the pull strategy is driven by marketing. And we have a lot of consumers coming in. So our business plan right at the beginning, which we submitted to HDFC, was extremely conservative. But we've shot our first year numbers in the first three months of existence itself. So that's why the valuations have taken an upswing. Also, the new services that we are adding, like the e-medical records, like uh, 
telehealth, like uh, manage referral services, concierge services, like having a situation where you can basically do a video or a teleconsult. All of these have added to the revenue potential revenue streams. We should be looking, we are looking to scale up very quickly. I'm aware of the fact and very, very cognizant of the fact that internet penetration in India is still at abysmally low 11%. And so from that perspective, us cracking the mobile puzzle is going to be very, very important. Whether it is through mobile applications or it is through mobile health, which is driven through EPABX or through the IDR systems and so on and so forth. But basically, M Health is going to be the next big thing and it's going to drive uh, uh, many angels into every nook and corner that we can find. So from that perspective, the future of many angels promises to be very, very bright. How much have you spent? We initially spent a couple of crores out of our own pockets as promoters and as founders of this idea. This idea was started by Dr. Arvinder Singhal, who's a world-renowned pediatric urologist, and uh, myself. And uh, we basically put a couple of crores in, then we had a few angels who put a couple of crores in, and then HDFC came in with three crores. So that's the amount of cash we raised at the present moment. But we will need more cash. In my opinion, we will need around the 20 million mark, uh, at 20 million US dollar mark at some period of time if we have to look at becoming a totally and globally based e hospital and take our dreams to a level where we are literally in every consumer's uh, handheld, in every consumer's PC, and in every consumer's pocket. That will end up taking a lot of cash from our side. So we'll probably look at a series B funding soon and then. Uh, to take us onwards till about maybe a series C funding in about three years time and then finally on to the IPO. That's the basic uh, finance raising or revenue raising situation of many angels. The funds that you raised from HDFC, where did you invest those funds? Costs have, uh, I mean our spends are basically at the present moment in technology, in operations at the present moment take up about 15% but the majority of our chunk of spends is either in technology or in developing the brand name which is marketing, PR, etc. And we look to be